Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the face in my resistance to truth presentation, Jesus encourages us to go through the process of emotionally removing from ourselves our own resistance to truth, whether it be feeling the truth of our personal emotions or our emotional resistance to accepting God's truth. Recorded on the 8th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay. Looks like everyone's been a bit tardy now, huh? Half of our people are missing. Lonely voice is cries, what is truth? <laughs> yeah, it's a good song, Johnny Cash. I like how he says in the in the song. The, the young boys taught the golden rule, you know, not to do unto others what you'd like them to do to you. And then the next year he's sent off to war. <laughs> As if that's what he'd like other people to do to him, right? Yeah. There's so many contrary things that we do on the planet, huh? Yeah. Okay, well, this is our second discussion about what we can do to develop our will to love facing facing some of our resistances um, sorry you don't have to put up with me for another hour talking you can share as much as you wish <laughs> so the topic of this discussion is facing my resistance to truth and in particular we're looking at facing our resistance to God's truth but also facing your resistance to feeling your own truth. What, what, what you really feel inside of you is a part of this subject. Just uh, let me overcome a sneeze. Okay. The first thing we need to realise in this discussion is this. We have commonly commonly presented on the planet the concept of my truth and we call that uh, we, we basically say to everybody else that you know they're allowed to have their truth but their truth is probably going to be different to my truth. Right. So the reason why we do this is because we have a resistance to God's truth. We like the concept that I'm allowed to have my truth, you're allowed to have your truth, and if we both hold on to what is our truth, and in the end we end up with, sa with about 7 billion different truths <laughs> and then we wonder why we all can't cooperate together uh, to me that's pretty obvious why because <laughs> we've all got our version of the truth so here you can see that when we're talking about facing my resistance to truth there at some point has to be a faith in the concept of absolute truth now again interestingly we do have faith in absolute truth when it comes to physical things have you found that so again like when i showed you in the previous uh, presentation the diagram about you know the magnet putting the magnet under the paper every one of you experienced the same thing did you not there were these lines of force that come around the magnet. And if you've got the same size magnet with the same strength, huh, same <coughs> lines of force. Exactly the same. Interesting, huh? It's consistent. 
right? And it's the same with what's called potential difference when it comes to voltage with regard to electronics. 12 volts is 12 volts and it has the same effect through one, uh, one ohm resistor and that it has one amp of flow of current. And you put the one amp of flow of current through the one resistor, it'll have 12 volts across it. It's the same every time. Every one of God's laws is like that, the same every time. Yep, jump off of a building and you'll fall at 9.8 metres per second squared on this planet. It'll be different for a different planet because if the different planet has a different size, then there's different forces. And so, but you can measure it consistently what it is, right? Because the law is consistent every time, right? So you have complete faith in absolute truth when it comes to physical things. Complete faith. But when it comes to emotions, when it comes to the creation of disease and suffering, when it comes to spiritual matters, you have no faith in it at all. That there's such a thing as absolute truth. But there is. That's what I'm saying. Logically, if God created a universe where all the physical things are consistent, then it would logically make sense that the emotional things must be consistent and the spiritual things must be consistent. And in fact... In fact, if they were inconsistent, it would demonstrate that God is not a very loving God. Because the inconsistency would be unpredictable and unpredictability would be very, very concerning. So imagine for a moment, you walk outside one morning and all of a sudden you fly off into space. <laughs> because the law of gravity wasn't working that morning. And, and we're travelling at, like, I think it's over a thousand miles an hour or whatever it was, and we just fly out into space through the centrifugal force because the law of gravity doesn't work anymore today. And then tomorrow it works again. Imagine how convenient. And then let's say it changed. So today it's 9.8 metres per second squared, but tomorrow it's 25 metres per second squared. And, and, and you wonder why you're so lethargic because <laughs> you can hardly move. You're compressed into the ground because <laughs> of the force. And you imagine the inconsistency and what that would result in. Absolute confusion. And yet, physically, we trust the consistency of the universe. So physically, we trust in absolute truth, in the concept of absolute truth. Right? And yet, when it comes to emotions, spiritual matters... We do not even want to believe there's such a thing as absolute truth. So we don't want to believe that if a person has cancer develop in their left breast, that it means that they have a certain emotion. We don't want to believe that. We don't want to believe that if I have a certain problem in my body with my joints, then it comes from another emotion. And if two people have the same problem in the same joint, it means they have the same emotion. We don't want to believe that. But it is true. But we don't want to believe it. So we have some kind of investment in not believing in absolute truth when it comes to emotional and spiritual matters. But physically, we're happy to have an investment in believing in absolute truth. It actually brings us a lot of joy in our lives physically. It allows our lives to be predictable to a certain extent. Predictability of safety and security is all based around absolute truth in the physical laws of God. But we don't have the same feeling of predictability and safety in the other laws. And we've got to ask ourselves why. There's got to be a reason why. So, when it comes to our lack of truth, you know, what we believe is my truth, which is really a lack of truth, facing our lack of truth... is going to be governed by the lack of truth was created by a lot of things right in our life but that's very different to our resistance to discovering truth
See how it's very similar to faith. The reason why we have a lack of truth is because we have complete confidence in the physical truths as being absolute truth that we discover, I'm talking about, the ones that have been discovered. But we have no confidence at all, no faith at all in absolute truth in any other respect to our life. So in other words, we are the world's view is trust the physical, believe in the physical truth, and that physical truth is absolute. That's the world's view. You can trust your life on it. You can bet on it. Right? But when it comes to emotional and spiritual matters, the world's view is now you, you, there's no such thing as absolute truth. Right? So there's no emotional or spiritual absolute truth. Now, obviously, this doesn't make very much logical sense, does it? If you think about it. On one hand, we're completely trusting the physical truth. We believe in absolute truth when it comes to physical matters. We believe it's the same truth no matter what, where you are in the world, what you're doing in the world, where you are in the universe. What you're doing in the universe, it's the same truth. Once we discover a physical truth, it's the same truth wherever you are. right? So, so we believe in that. We will send people to the moon trusting that. We will spend billions and billions of dollars sending them to the moon trusting that. right? We're even now considering having people fly you know, over to other places of the world in outer space. Right? Shooting them up 22,000 miles an hour around the world in, in one hour or less. Right? We're even considering that. And then having come through because we trust the physical laws. That's how much trust in, we have in them being absolute. Right? And yet when it comes to the emotional, spiritual stuff, we all say, nah, there's no such thing as absolute truth. And I'm saying to you, that makes no logical sense whatsoever. <coughs> Graham, thanks. I think one trouble we have is that so many people in the past and religions have proclaimed they've been in possession of absolute truth. Yes. So there, now we're getting to our resistance, aren't we? Which is very different to... So why do we have a resistance to the concept of absolute truth in this area? Well, this is one of the reasons. Because we've been presented a whole heap of things as true and we've discovered, and science has discovered, them to be not true. All right? And, and this is what, what I'm saying. Like, If science discovers something to be not true, then of course it was never true. <laughs> Whether you believed it or not is immaterial. It was never true, right? But people don't consider that all of God's universe is governed by science, including all of the laws of the spiritual and emotional are all governed by the same scientific principles. Exactly the same, right? They just relate to a different part of our experience. Not the physical, but rather the spiritual all the emotional part of our being but so we raise some of our resistance to what so one of the things is again our emotions that that Graham pointed out about lies being presented as truth oops presented as truth So this is one of our resistances to truth, isn't it? We've had this past experience we're not releasing. If we come down to Julie on this side, and maybe Ivana on this side. <coughs> I think the physical truths um, are for our comfort. 
so they're comfortable. We're comfortable with them, they'll help us out. Whereas emotion, the emotions that we'll have to go through make us resistant because we're uncomfortable to having to work at it. Yeah, but see, even that's a false belief, isn't it? Yes. Because the reality is if you believe in absolute truth from an emotional perspective, it will make your life very comfortable. It's Everything's the effort. predictable. It's the effort that's involved in, in the change. No, it's not. It's the same effort as you have in your physical one. Like, I've seen scientists spend their entire life on Earth discovering one truth. One. One truth. Like, isn't that a lot of effort? <laughs> that we've reaped the benefits of. Yeah, but, but, but if I discover an emotional truth, you will reap the benefit of it too, won't you? Yes. <laughs> so uh, how is it different? But I, but I get your point. Your point is that you believe... I believe, yeah. You know, so there's a belief yes. that there's more pain... Yeah. ...discovering emotional truth. Yeah, it's and, and effort as well with the pain. So it's not only... It's requiring a lot of... Um, confrontation about myself so it's all that that's got to go with it honestly if you saw what the average scientist goes through to discover something uh, you would think that discovering emotional truth is a lot easier to <laughs> tell me i tell you honestly yeah honestly most a lot of them in history have had wrecked lives they've never had a decent relationship their entire life they've never enjoyed anything other than their passion to discover this one thing they've never experienced a, you know joyful things in other areas of their life they are consigned to that only that area of study they've not experienced other things at all mm -hmm. like honestly i look at these scientists and i go wow if a person's able to use their will just to discover one physical truth that benefits mankind then why aren't we all willing to use our emotional will which every time we do it will also benefit humankind to me it all does get down to the the truth that you're raising and that is we yeah we have some false beliefs about pain, pain. We, we have some major problems with pain right we actually believe that discovering truth gives us more pain mm. which is a like, hang on a sec mm. Every other truth we've ever discovered hasn't given us more pain, it's given us more pleasure. But when it comes to emotions, we're saying that the whole idea is completely the opposite of that. <laughs> we're basically saying that all of God's laws apply one way in the physical, which is when I discover it, it's going to be better, it's going to be more interesting, it's going to enjoy, and, I, and I'm going to have all these wonderful things happening. I'm saying that that's the truth. But as soon as it applies emotionally, when well, it's not truth anymore, the flip side is true. That's really what we're saying. Yes, and I'm also saying that somebody else has done it for me, with the with the uh, with the the physical with the physical one. Yes. So someone else That's, did, went I've to the put trouble. Hard yards in. I, I can't agree with that either because actually you did some hard yards when you learnt how to walk, discovering gravity. Okay, I can't remember that. <laughs> no, you can't remember it because you released it emotionally. And I can walk. You cry. Yeah, you can walk now, but you but but you released it emotionally. Remember, you fell down and you cried. Right, and you let it all go, and by letting it all go, all go, it meant you don't remember it anymore. Mm. Even you don't carry it around anymore. So you did. Every one of you did hard yards learning how to walk. <laughs> every one of you, every one of you had some pain learning how to walk. The difference is you released it in the moment, and you were allowed to. Like mum and dad come along, you fall over, and they didn't make fun of you and ridicule you and kick you and do all the other things that we have a tendency to do as adults now to each other. What they did was they let you have a cry, they cuddled you, right? So the nurse, you let you have a cry. So you release the whole thing. Isn't that wonderful? Now, now you don't shiver every time you consider walking, <laughs> right? So you did do some hard yards and they did, were painful. Right? So you can't say they weren't, but you don't remember them because you let them go. Right? And you had faith because of the benefit, did you not? Yes, I guess I did. Yeah. yeah. So can you see the stories we tell us ourselves? It's like we're telling ourselves stories all the time about this. We are. We, we're going. We're going. No, that's physical, and this has happened. That's happened, and all these arguments you've come up with. Well, I, I see the point, which is the, the issue of pain. But, but the argumentation you're using is all flawed. It's all illogical, and it's all flawed. And we need to see it as such. 
You see? We need to see it as flawed logic. It's an excuse so that we can avoid discovering truth. It's an excuse. We're, we're just using excuses now. And this is our problem. We're using excuses to avoid faith and we're using excuses to avoid truth. Right? Now, now, you imagine if we're using excuses to avoid faith, excuses to avoid truth, excuses to avoid action and excuses to avoid emotion, where are we going to get? <laughs> Not very far in our development, I would suggest. Yeah. Make sense? I agree. Excuses, particularly for me, yes. Yeah, and 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 this is the thing is that, and this is why I wanted to write every one of them you raised. I wanted to, you know, to to disagree with because at the end of the day, they are just excuses that you don't apply to the physical, but you do apply to the emotional, right? And this tells us our investment in maintaining emotional pain is very very high we are terrified of emotional pain we are less terrified of physical pain than we are emotional pain that's the reality we, we are willing to die from cancer a terrible disease with, with huge amounts of physical pain rather than feel the emotion that drives that particular disease that's how strongly we are willing to resist emotional pain. So intense, we have an intense desire to avoid emotional pain. And we're willing to undergo huge amounts of physical problems in order to avoid emotional pain. Right? We are willing to spend millions and billions of dollars on pharmaceuticals in order to avoid the results of emotional pain. Right? Yeah. If we come to Pamela, oh, sorry, Ivana's next. So. Oh, I was just going to say, um, wouldn't the resistance to discovering truth be kind of similar to the previous one where it would mean we would have to change and would challenge other people, potentially get attacked and stuff like you that? You could almost put exactly the same list in, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly the same list. And in fact, in fact they are the same lists, right? <laughs> really, they are the same list. And, and that's, that's an interesting fact. So, so what we're trying to do now is we're simplifying the reason why we're resistive, you see. We're having these talks about truth, love, emo sorry, truth, emotion, faith and action. But you can see we're using a lot of excuses to, to not engage the development of those particular qualities. Right? That's what we're doing. Yep. If we go out the back. Oh, sorry, oh. Yeah, Pam. Um, for the scientific mind, they don't see the correlation between cause and effect directly with emotions. And with God's benevolence, he gives us time to, to work things out, but they don't see that. It's not measurable in their statistical... Um, is that... Yeah, but, but, but even that, like, let's look at... So we're raising the issue of laws of God now, right? On one hand, on the physical, we're saying all of God's laws are consistent. And then on the other hand, on the spiritual and emotional, we're saying all of the laws are inconsistent. Well, not directly measurable, uh, obvious. But, but they are measurable and they are obvious and they are consistent. This is what I'm suggesting. Right? You've just got to know what you're looking for. So it, it's like a guy who's a scientist looking for different, you know, discovering different things. He, he firstly has to have, have an imagination and some faith about what he's looking for before he discovers something, right? And you've got to do the same with this, it's exactly the same. Uh, what I'm suggesting, though, is if, how can we, on one hand, say that the laws of God are consistent and I'll base my life on them when it comes to the physical, and then at the same, in the same breath almost say the laws of God when it comes to spiritual and emotional issues are inconsistent or don't even exist. It makes no sense logically at all. <laughs> you know, and, and it's always fascinated me my whole life, my whole 2,000 years of life, of how much we're willing to fully trust physical stuff while at the same time not believe that God is consistent when it comes to spiritual and emotional things as he is with physical things. It, it blows me away that we're willing to do that. No. At the 2014 assistance group, I had a tumour on my right metastatic 
um, but it was metastatic cancer and it was on the scar line. Um, I had liver, ovarian and breast cancer and you dropped me into fear to the greatest degree that I've ever been dropped into, especially on the last day. Yeah. I had a tumour the size of a hazelnut at that, at that um, assistance group and then by the time I gave birth in November, it had gone completely. It's never come back. Yeah. I realised about my fear um, towards my father who just died and I'd actually been very relieved that he died. I realised about the judgement of him, my resentment, expectations, demands both ways. Demands of men and so forth. Yeah. yeah. And I touched on it again 10 months ago and a mole the size of a bug dropped off my right shoulder. Yeah. Um, so there is something going on. So I of am course. growing in some faith yeah. as this truth starts to come through. Yeah, so exactly. that can be of a... And this is part of the experimentation process is, you, you know, do what most scientists do, use their own bodies as a, <laughs> as, as, as a proving ground, right? Uh, the reality is that when we have some more brave scientists in the world, they'll start doing, like, global tests on these particular issues, right? But at this stage, nobody even wants to believe it because if you look at it again in the world, how, how addicted are we to pharmaceuticals? Uh, pretty high, right? There's a, there's a huge addiction to pharmaceuticals because we want, we want doctors to take away the effects rather than us dealing with the cause. That's what we want. We don't want to have to address the cause. We want only the effects taken away from us. So if we truly understand God's laws, we would understand that actually every law is consistent. And this is one of the things you're going to understand when we talk about God's laws, that every law is consistent. If something's happening to me, there's a good, consistent reason why it's happening. Trust that. Whatever it is, even if you haven't found out what yet, trust that there must be a consistent reason. And if two of us have got the same problem in the same location in our body, it has to be the same problem that's causing it. Now, that would greatly simplify our lives in a lot of respects, wouldn't it? It would bring a lot of happiness and a lot of joy to know that if I've got the same problem as you've got and we both know that somebody else has cured that by doing this particular thing, all I've got to do is that particular thing in a sincere way and I'll cure it. Like, isn't that great? Instead of being petrified for the rest of my life that I might catch this and die and whatever else, wouldn't it be great to know that anything that comes along, any disease that comes along, any sickness that comes along, is all has a cause as to why it's interacting in my body. And that cause is the same for, it, for every single person that has that particular thing happening. Now that, that would greatly simplify my life. Now, now to me, this is the, this is the thing is we keep telling ourselves that sin is the thing that simplifies my life. We keep telling ourselves that if, if we do the addiction, that's the thing that's going to make my life better. We keep telling ourselves, is it, if we don't know the truth, that's better. It's better to be ignorant, you know, than it is to know. Many of us feel that way, right? right. We tell ourselves these lies thinking that the outcome is going to be better. And it's not. It's going to be worse if we keep doing that. This is why truth, truth is just, uh, honestly, it is such an important thing to understand and seek truth. And in fact, from God's perspective, it is a sin to not seek truth. Isn't that interesting? It's actually a sin to not seek truth because it's not in harmony with love. When it, whenever you deny truth and desire to not seek truth, you're actually being unloving to yourself and others. The truth will give you freedom. The truth will give you knowledge. The truth will give you the ability to solve problems. The, the truth is a wonderful thing. When you reject it or don't even seek for it, you can understand Fry from God's perspective it's a sin. Because the very thing that could help you is what you're rejecting. Truth is the key to your life, to the rest of your life, all of your life, physical, emotional and spiritual. The truth is the key. Amber, thanks. 
Um, one of the reasons why we are all here and everyone who tunes into your talks, is that because they have a sincere desire for the truth? Well, I, I don't believe that's the case because I feel a person who has a sincere desire for the truth lives the truth. So I, I, think, I think many of you have developed a fascination for the truth, which is very, very different than a sincere desire to live it. Do, do you see the difference? So, so for many of you, you are fascinated with the truth, you think it's wonderful, you think of the possibilities of it, you, it, it, it triggers your imagination, and it helps you, helps you think about what the potentials might be, but at this stage there's still a lot of doubt in it. And so it's like you're just, you, you're just hearing it without doing it. And what I'm suggesting is if you do it, it would be far better for you. You would then be able to measure the results and therefore your faith will grow, your love will grow, things will change as a result. So yes, to a degree, you've been influenced by all sorts of forces, some, some you can't see and some you can, to come here and listen to truth. But at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to have to make some personal decisions about following it, if you want to benefit from it. And it's only the people who follow it that benefit from it. So if I'm not benefiting, it's because I'm not following. <laughs> and I need to look at my reasons why. And the reasons why partly are faith, not part, another part of it is this aspect of resisting truth. And why do we do it? For emotional reasons. It's the same thing. We're using it, you, we, we reject for emotional reasons. So can you see how addicted we are to avoiding pain? What we believe is pain. And we believe it's so much pain that it's not going to benefit us. That's what we believe. Crazy. We're willing to store all this pain rather than release it, believing that storing it is better than releasing it. And for most of us, we're like pressure cookers. You know what? You know, you remember the old days you used to have these pressure cookers, you know, with a little release valve on the top? You remember those? We do up the cooker, nice and seal it up, nice and tight, put a whole heap of veggies and stuff in there and away you go and it just slow cooks and there's all this pressure and steam. And, and did you ever see one explode? <laughs> it's like the pressure hasn't been released and what happens is, you know, off it goes. And, and many of you are at that point. We're almost at exploding point, not releasing your emotions, thinking that there's something going to be good about just stuffing one more in there and keeping it in there like it's totally like even the physical laws prove that that's not a good idea right? as the pressure builds up pressure builds up pressure builds up what the physical laws all state that any pressure that builds up inside of a thing physically eventually is going to find the the single point of weakness is it not and then go through that point of weakness as and in a major release of it oh, which is basically an explosion right major release now if that applies physically what i'm saying to you that also applies emotionally so i'm saying to you you store your emotions like this this is what's going to happen to you you end up going nuts with it or or getting out of your mind or ending up with alzheimer's and not even remembering who you are that's that's how all those things come about by choosing to not feel choosing to keep all that pressure keep all that pressure until it explodes right when we have a resistance to discovering truth, we're basically storing, 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 and keeping on storing all this emotion that needs to get released somehow, and sooner or later it's going to get released. Now, it's either going to be from what you believe is your choice, or it's going to be through the laws. One way or the other, it's going to happen. And it's going to require at some point a surrender, like a release valve, you know, pull up the release valve, surrender, surrender to the fact. And, and I feel this is what we need to do with, with this aspect of truth as well. Just learn how to love it, not just surrender to it, but love it. It's beautiful. It's the answer to your life. Like you love it in your physical life. So why don't you love it in your emotional life and your spiritual life? It makes no logical sense to not love it in your emotional or spiritual life when you already love it in the physical life. 
Yeah. Uh, Tara, thanks. So when we start to pray for truth, are we actually, this is where I get a bit confused, am I first of all praying for the false belief or the, or the truth in me that um, how God sees me? Can I suggest, what, what is a prayer? A prayer is a sincere longing for God. Well, so and a sincere longing or desire, desire. isn't it? A, that's a prayer. So to, have, to pray for truth, I would have to have a sincere longing for truth, would I not? Yes. You don't have that. So you're not praying for truth. Right. You don't have, a, don't have a sincere longing for it. But which truth? Doesn't matter which truth. Okay. So either way, I, I just have a sincere longing for truth and then something will... What are you, what's the real feeling, feeling you have about truth? Well, I'm scared of a lot of it. Exactly. You're afraid of it. So what's your feeling coming out? Don't tell me the truth. Don't tell me the truth. Don't tell me the truth. That's the feeling coming out of you. So God answers that. <laughs> Because yeah. that's your prayer. Yeah. But, but see, God's law, universe, God's laws are go to give you truth. And so God's saying, well, yeah, I, I'm not going to give you truth. That's fine because you're not asking me for it. You're actually rejecting it, so I can't give it to you. But my laws are going to be hammering you every day yeah. <laughs> while that happens, which is exactly what's happening in your life, right? Yeah. So, so this is the problem is that, is that you've got to face up to the real feeling the real feeling in most of us is, I don't want it. I'm terrified of it. I just don't want to know what the truth is about this particular issue or that particular issue. I really don't want to know. I'm just terrified. And, and that's your prayer. Yeah. And then right. feeling those blocks. Yeah. So the, the key to me is to go, okay, there's your prayer. How do you change your prayer? Well, your desire inside of yourself for truth has to change. How do you change any desire? You have to feed yourself with what? Truth, ironically, <laughs> that's going to be hard. So here I am, I've got all these false beliefs and, and the very thing that is my antidote is the thing I'm rejecting. Yeah. It doesn't seem very logical, but that's what we do. The very thing that is the antidote to our false beliefs. And remember, what, what is fear? False expectations. False expectations, expectations appearing real. real. So... so our fear is our false expectations appearing real. So here we are, we've got our fear and the false expectations appearing real. What's the antidote to fear? Truth. What can crush fear? Truth. And yet I'm afraid of truth. Now, can you see, am I really afraid of truth? We haven't even really experimented with that either, have we? Maybe what I'm afraid of is all the false things that I'm going to have to realise are false. Maybe that's what I'm afraid of. So this morning when I was feeling the fear um, and the humiliation from the teacher... Well, that's feeling the, an event. The, the, yeah, okay. Right, which is a memory. was just really um, like about me being okay, making a mistake, it's okay. Well, God can now present you with that truth because you went through an emotional feeling which released the blocking feeling. You understand? Yeah, but I can see the difference because if it's actually not... Because I wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't my fault there. But when it's receiving truth about um, something that I don't chosen want to like, to do. yeah, what I don't want to hear. Yeah, very different, isn't it? Mm. Very different. Yeah. The majority of us reject that out of hand because it's something we want. Mm. Yeah, it's like it's like if if you want to have a beer, right? And somebody tells you you shouldn't have one, you just ignore them, won't you? Because you want to have one. If you want to have a cigarette or take some drugs or have sex with that person, if somebody comes along and tells you you shouldn't do it because it's not moral or whatever, you'd say, "Oh, it's all right, you know, I'll go and have it." Because you you explain away to yourself the things you want. Mm. This is what you do. You justify your wants, right? We do the same with our fear. We do the same. It's the things that we want badly that we don't want to give up that, are, that often resist, cause us to resist truth, right? Yeah, I realised um, God's got the final word and I'm quite rebellious to that. 
Yeah, but why are we rebellious? It makes no sense logically yeah. because the more rebellion we have, the more pain and suffering we have. So, you know, it's like it okay. doesn't make any logical sense. But what, what does it give us? It gives us a sense of power over mm. our own life. Mm. What power to do worse things to ourselves. Mm. But, but that's what we want. And why do we want that? Again, childhood issues, isn't that's it? That's right. Again. Well, it's just parents that had the final word. And who often did harmful things to us mm. in that final word. Well, God doesn't want to do that. So, so this is where, again, we need to separate one God from how our parents have acted. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. If we go, Natalie, thanks. <coughs> Just in relation to your pressure cooker analogy, sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in that pressure cooker with my emotions and it gets to the point where it's so overwhelming that I just give up and go, all right, God, you have to tell me because I don't have any answers. What my question is, is that pressure building, that, that holding on to that pain, is that the laws trying to bring me into harmony to the of point course. that I will ask God? Of course, but at the end of the day, you've got to ask yourself the question, why do you wait until the pressure is so extreme? I'm asking that question at the moment. Yeah, yes. that's the question you've got to ask. And that is all about your resistance to acknowledging truth before then and feeling the emotion before then, isn't it? Yeah. So this is about your fear of emotion. And we'll talk about your fear of emotion tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Felix? Um. Uh, wait for the mic, man. Uh, resist, resistance to, uh, with resistance to discovering truth, mm -hmm. um, I feel a big one is is just the like the choice to like if I choose an addiction, I, then I get like instant pleasure, but then pain later. Yeah. If I choose to to challenge the addiction and say no, I won't feed that, then it's pain now, discomfort now, but pleasure even just a few hours later, and it seems to be something like more solid. So that that thing I think. I feel is personally important to that. Um, so you're really referring to our addiction to avoid pain at all costs. Yeah. Aren't you really in a way? And also, what was the second one? Um, oh, I've got a bank now. Sorry, mate. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 it wasn't you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, it's important to understand that this addiction to avoid pain, very big addiction on this planet. Not understanding that actually there's pain, pain is not a bad thing. And, and, and many of you are in pain, physically, anyway. <laughs> like, it's not like you're devoid of pain in your life, like you're in pain anyway. So it's just the emotional pain that you're avoiding. Oh, and another thing, um, with both faith and truth, um, mm. isn't it the case that to discover truth, even if I don't feel that something, like, for example, that, you know, you make a claim about, say, uh, you know, the addiction is um, feeding addiction is is always bad, and then I you know say no 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 that's not right. But if if I with faith don't I have that doesn't it have that quality that I can actually like jump a step up before I'm there like I can actually just trust that and go for that and it's kind of it's kind of like a bit of an almost like a shortcut like a like a, a big like a step up it's not only a shortcut yeah <laughs> it's also the way to avoid some pain in the discovery process yeah. so so um let me just have a cough for this so uh, to give an example <clears throat> um in your example that you chose yeah. i just need to have another cough In the example that you chose to discover yourself, um, what you chose to do was you, you chose to you know, experiment with the addiction, right? Yeah. And to see whether it would bring pain. See, I would have chose to experiment with not having the addiction yeah. <laughs> and see whether it brought me pleasure. <laughs> to me, that's the logical thing to do first. <laughs> but, but it's interesting that the majority of us don't do that. We, we, we tend to go yeah. for the thing that we want first to yep. see what the that's results exactly. are going to be yeah, yeah. before we go for the thing that somebody's telling us is bad, you know, that, that's better for us mm. to discover whether that's true. And, and this is where I see a lot of pain occurs in the, in, in the actual experimental process. Mm. Many of us are choosing the, the negative thing Hoping for a positive outcome. That's why we choose to experiment with that first. We're hoping for a positive outcome. And, and my suggestion is, 
well, you'd be better off actually choosing the positive thing, right? Or what's been advised to you as being positive. If you had some trust of myself, for example, you'd probably choose a different path. And then you can, hi it's highly unlikely that you will experience the pain yep. that comes from yep. the negative thing you would have chosen yep. in your experiment. Yep. Um, Obviously, you can do both if you want. So, so if we were scientists doing this, we would have a we'd have a control group, and then we'd have a group of people who want to choose the negative thing, <laughs> and we'll see what the results there for them are. And then we'd have a group of people who wanted to choose the positive thing, and we'd see what the results for those are, and then we'd measure all of those results. That's what yeah. probably what we'd do. But but for me, I go well. Oh, I don't know if I want all these negative results to work out whether something's true. I'd prefer to choose some positive things and work out whether that's true or not first and, and because, because I'm trusting one truth and that is God is love, God is good. Therefore, if I choose the loving thing or what I believe to be the loving thing, there's a higher likelihood of happiness resulting from that particular choice. You see, so that's why I feel like choose that first, and if that doesn't work out, then you would have to discover further why. Yeah. But, but, and and I'd suggest that it's our view of truth or love than God, not God's. But, but I'd prefer to do that because it means that I'm going to have far less pain <laughs> than waiting until yeah. f you know doing the other experiment on the other side. Yeah, I, I, um, I suppose I just didn't want to give up. Correct. No, I didn't actually have faith that I could actually lose my addiction and be okay. But then I found out later that I could. When well, I it's not only that. You didn't even have any... Well, the feeling you had at the time was, it's not true. The feeling you had inside of yourself, because that's the feeling I felt mostly from you, yeah, is the feeling yeah. of, no, that's not true. That can't be true. You know, surely your addictions are good. You know, everybody in the world knows their addictions are good. That's how I feel. And, and so that's when you hear somebody telling you the opposite, of course, it's highly unlikely you'll mm. make that experiment. You'll do the experiment you want to do first. Yeah. But, but either way, you learn, which is a great thing. I also noticed I made some false assumptions that I, that I just assumed if I really checked them out better. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, but we even make our false assumptions based on what we've been taught in the past. So, so God even makes allowances for that. Mm -hmm. Many of our false assumptions are based upon error from our childhood experience. Oh, can I also ask another thing about the faith sure. part? Yep. With the faith, like... Um, it can also even just start off with like as a just quite intellectual thing and you can use like, or is that then, I mean, it's just like, you, I remember in the first century you spoke about like a mustard seed of faith. You only need something like, um, only a, if you have only a mustard seed of faith, it can move mountains. Um, so it's only like, a, it, it's still emotional then, but it's just a tiny little bit and that you just have to trust that tiny little bit and put yeah. my, faith, my bets faith. on that rather than my bets on... Yeah, if we go back to our childhood and see how faith was learned, the way it was learned in our childhood is that somebody made some kind of promise to us. We didn't know whether it was true or not at that stage. But when they fulfilled their promise, then we had some faith that they would fulfill their next promise. So, so something happened which caused a bit of faith to grow that their future promises would also be fulfilled. You yeah. follow? Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. And, and this is how what happens in our growth of faith once we once we release emotion, that's what happens naturally with our growth of, growth oh, of faith. Yeah. We we get things proven to us, and those particular proofs arrive emotionally and and through our physical experience, and then we have faith in them. So we carry that forward to the next experiment and so forth. And isn't it also that just like with the you know we had all our emotions, we said oh they were gods, all this you know bastard and unreliable and stuff, and it's like oh hang on. I don't know God, that was my parents. Yeah. It's a bit like this with, with faith, is that it was my parents and my environment and those people that I couldn't have faith in, Correct. not God's laws, not God. Correct. Yeah. Because the reality is we do have a lot of faith in God's laws. In yeah. fact, if you think about it, for the majority of you, if you think about this, at this stage, the only thing you probably have faith in is God's physical laws. You have no faith in people, no faith in emotions, no faith in spirituality a lot of times. And for most of us, the only thing we really have any faith in is actually God's physical laws. So isn't that ironic? We actually already have some faith in God, just in the physical laws. That's, that's good news. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. So getting back to the avenue of truth, though, um, you can see its importance. And in fact, my, my feeling is faith is the thing that motivates you 
to want to discover new things. But the truth is the thing that f finishes up setting you free. So that's why it's so important. Right? Faith gets you to the point where you want truth. Truth is the thing that's going to get everything else for you. Right? This is why it's something that we need to come to love rather than feel so terrified of or, or, or afraid of. Ivana, you would like to? Um, I was just wondering, so um, just to do with like acting lovingly, like God's, um, in with God's perspective of love and like being in truth or something, can't that also sort of result in a painful thing? To just say like if I confront my parents or something to do with how they've treated me. Would you confront them though if they didn't want to be confronted? Um, well, I think I, <laughs> I have in the past. Yeah, but it that, it's not going to work very well. No. Because that's imposing upon their will. But if they asked you, you'd, you'd definitely say the truth. Or if they're trying to influence your life, then you'd say. Okay. Yep. Um, I think I've kind of lost what I was going to so say. What, what's oh, happened so what's happened? Sorry, go, Vanna. No, go you on. go. Oh, I was just going to say, like, so I know something that I don't, uh, I, I normally don't do. Like if, if I'm having a conversation with someone... Can I get to the crux okay. of your problem? Yep. The crux of your problem is you believe that if you act in harmony with love and truth, there's a potential of pain. Yep. That's the problem. Yep. And, and there's only a potential of pain because of the world. Okay. That's the only potential. You see, you see if all of us acted in harmony with love and truth, there would be no pain. There'd be no pain on the planet. But wouldn't I still, like, uh, with me acting in love and truth, um, and maybe if some people get angry with me... As no, no, that, that oh. wouldn't happen. No, they wouldn't okay. get angry. Right. What I'm saying is if all of us acted in harm with love and truth, all of us on the planet, yep. there, would, there would be no pain and suffering as a result. But wouldn't we still have to release the pain that we've already got within ourselves? Oh, of course, but we can yep. choose to do that without harming anybody. Okay. Right? Yep. The only... The only way that pain can happen if we live in harmony with God's laws of love and truth is for the world to be out of harmony with that place. So where's the pain coming from? Is it coming from God's laws or is it coming from another source? From ourselves? No, it's coming from the world. All of the pain I'm that's in you, confused. all of the pain that's in you can have, has come from the world and your choices. Okay. A combination yeah. of those two things. Yeah. If you stop making choice to sin, now you've gotten rid of the any future pain that would result from your sin yeah right if you then release your past sin you've now gotten rid of all of the potential pain that comes from your past sin now any action you take you can only get pain by somebody else causing it yeah, not I you think that's what my question yeah, i know that's what, your question yeah, is. That's what i'm getting at <laughs> and what i'm saying to you is is that is that you're not seeing the truth and that is the pain is not coming from God's laws. It's not coming from God, your experience with God. It's coming because people in the world choosing to dump it on you. Okay. And, and yes, that is a potential while the world is in a different place than God's truth. Yep. That is the only potential. But if all of the world got into a place of God's truth, then that would not even be the potential either. So what you're, trying, you're doing is you're measuring a negative effect and you're blaming it on God or God's laws or truth when actually the blame lies on the people that are in error. Yeah, well, I normally don't even... I'm not in truth and love with people because I assume that... I know, that's, and that, in that regard, you cause them pain and that's... That's not good. What I'm suggesting yeah. is you act in harmony with love and truth. You will no longer cause yourself pain or other people pain. And from that point onwards, the only pain you are going to experience is the unreleased emotional pain that's in the pressure cooker or pain from other people who are in out of harmony with love and truth. That's the only pain you will experience. Now, that's a lot less pain than you're currently experiencing. <laughs> All right. So surely it's still a better, better outcome. You follow? <laughs> oh, I'm just getting really confused. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why. Like you listen to the logic of what I've just said to you again when we when you, you listen to the re the recording. Anyway, I must move on because we're. Um
we're getting near the end. I just want to read you a number of questions which are in your outlines, but this applies to each section. It applies to the issues of faith. It applies to the issues of truth. It's also going to apply to the issues of emotion and also action. So what actions do I take daily to challenge my false beliefs? What do I do to challenge my, false, my opinions? How do I determine each day whether what I really believe is, is God's truth or not? Do I do that? What do I do? What do I do to accept God's truth? What actions do I take to accept God's truth? Do I even attempt to accept God's truth? Or just do I, do I want to keep staying in my error? What actions do I take to experiment with God's truth? Instead of just going... Oh, you know, you know, someone else can do all the experiments for me and, and, and I'll just listen to what they say, you know, because I'm too afraid to do anything positive. You'd be better off taking, making personal experiments with God's truth. What actions do I take daily to follow God's truth? So there's many times in your day-to-day -day life where you're confronted with situations where speaking the truth, acting in truth, being transparent, being open is all available to you and you deny doing it. You choose to not do it. So, so I'm saying, well, no, do the opposite of that and see what that, how that works out. What actions do I take daily to experience everything emotionally? What, what do I do to work through my feelings about these things? Do I actually trigger my feelings or do I try to avoid them all the time? Right. It, because the, the issue is many of you still think that sinning is your best course of action. You, you do. You, you believe that. You think, you've, right, you think hold, withholding truth is the best course of action. You do. That's a sin. So you think sinning is the best course of action when it comes to truth. And I'm saying to you, why you think that, you're going to also not be able to receive any truth from God. Now, if you're going to get educated in truth and you can't receive truth from God, then we're stuffed, right? So, so we're, we're stopping the process of getting an education in God with, with, from God by actually just even deciding that we're not going to be transparent, we're not going to be open, we're not going to live in truth every moment of our life. I said to the previous group, and I've said to you a few days ago, Siamese twins, love and truth joined at the hips, right? You can't have one functioning without the other also functioning. So stop thinking you can. Many of you want love while at the same time reject, rejecting truth. And I'm saying to you, it's actually impossible to be loved or to give love while you're rejecting truth. Impossible. So these are things that we need to consider with regard to our resistance to truth. All right, we'll have a 20-minute break now. And after the break, uh, we'll have a Q&A on both faith and on truth. So we'll just do a Q&A after the break. Now, but it's a 20-minute break, so five past one. Uh, five past two, sorry. Not one, that's... Uh, <laughs>